uh, very excited to be here. Thanks for having me on today. Uh, my name is Tim Allard, and I'm on the product side for the Orchestration API at Agoric. Um, and just a couple of quick bullet points uh, about my background. You know, I, I've been building products my whole career, uh, blockchain specifically, since around 2018. Uh, really started to see tons of energy moving into a space that I was very comfortable in, which is Web2 at the time. Uh, coming into GitHub of talking about this blockchain crypto thing, and it was just super exciting. And I was thinking about, you know, how how can I take what I already know and 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 Web threeify it and 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 start participating um, in the space. So that brought me to become a big fan of uh, having a passion for very big challenges um, in the space. They're 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 plentiful. So uh, super excited for that, um, and really started with a lot of things around abstraction seed abstraction, you know, how can we soften the experience for users with remembering seed phrases, account abstraction, how can we make things simple for users to navigate the space and, and you know, moving into uh, things around gas abstraction. And, and I, I really like abstraction. <laughs> and I'll throw in one more terminology abstraction. There's a lot of things that we expect a lot of uh, people coming into the space to know and understand and softening that experience for users is, is something that's uh, something big on my end. So I love all of that. I'm super happy to be here. Um, and yeah, a little, little background about myself. All of that uh, interest and abstraction is going to pay off well with the orchestration, which is our topic today. Um, exactly. So, quick overview of what we're what we're here for today. This is our monthly AMA, um, and uh, so I'll be going through some questions that the community members asked us. And uh, if you didn't post questions in the thread, but you do have a question, please feel free to drop it in the chat, and we'll get to it toward the end. Um, so kicking things off, first uh, to start, Tim, can we have a quick and simple introduction to the Orchestration API? Uh, what is it? Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, getting pretty basic, it is an API, so it's an application programming interface. It allows people to uh, have a really solid foundation of, of code to do amazing and great things. Um, so the Orchestration API specifically, it really allows developers to really build amazing cross-chain experiences. Uh, we're on GitHub. Uh, people can check out the repositories. They can clone and fork things, add things to their project. Um, but I think from my perspective, one of the beauties of it is it uses a coding language that millions of developers across the globe already know today, which is JavaScript. Um, it's like 17 million plus. And to me, that's very empowering. Um, because JavaScript today basically runs our daily lives, whether you realize it or not. Um, and it could be our daily lives, our social lives, our financial lives. It could power our phone, our refrigerator, or our car. Um, and it powers the orchestration API as well, and a lot of things that we're building at Agoric. So that's uh, really cool because it allows developers and people to participate right out of the gate with something that they might already have as a tool in their tool belt. And um, I think uh, that's, that's something really, really important because there's a, lot of, there's a lot of onboarding and a lot of things to learn, which is super fun, right? I, I need to learn something every day, but also when you're trying to build something, you don't wanna be bottlenecked with, with a tech stack or a technology. If you have something in your pocket already that can jumpstart you or kick off your, idea creation. So you can focus on your idea rather than on a lot of onboarding. That's where the orchestration API really excels. So feeling comfortable is something you might have learned in school uh, in a semester or are currently uh, writing code uh, in, in Web 2 and, and are like, how can I participate in Web 3? Well, you can because you already know something that that the orchestration API can can help you get your idea from you know point A to point B. So the orchestration API is is really a set of power tools that we have um, to be able to do certain things that are just really complicated uh, in the space today. And it really it really accelerates the experience to to allow you to focus on on, on your idea. So some things that you can really do is like in, in the concept of blockchain, there are things called blocks. And a lot of times when a block finishes, you can't really persist and do certain things from a coding perspective uh, where you potentially want to retain certain information, like what just happened? What do I want to do next? When you're trying to chain a bunch of things together, because in our, in our daily lives, it's really comprised about multi-action things, right? 
So uh, when we talk about multi-block execution, we can do things over the course of multiple blocks. We can do things for waiting for certain things to happen and listening for those certain things to happen to do something else down the line. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's really powerful. Um, and just going back uh, very quickly to living in a multi-chain world, like getting rid of the blockchain altogether. When we think about just doing basic actions, they're usually comprised of more than one thing. And I'm just going to use an example here. Like you're sitting in your living room and you're hungry and you want to walk to the refrigerator to get something out of the fridge. So what do you do? You stand up, you walk through the living room, you go into the kitchen, you go to the refrigerator, you take your hand, you open the door, you grab something out of the refrigerator, maybe it's some juice, close the door, go back through the kitchen, through the living room, back to the couch, sit down and drink your juice. There's a lot of actions there that you don't even think about that are just essentially automated in your mind. But every step of the way, you're not reconfirming with yourself, all right, I'm going to stand up and all right, I need to do the next step. So the orchestration API literally solves a lot of these things where the next example that I'm going to show is if you were to add blockchain onto that daily life example, you're going to get stopped at every single part of the way where you just stand up and then you need to sign a confirmation and then you walk to the living room. And you sign that confirmation again, and every step of the way, it gets kind of, it get, gets kind of um, noisy. It gets kind of there's there's room for error. You know, maybe as you were walking into the living room, you veered off and went into the dining room on accident. So with the orchestration API, you can literally sign something once, and you can go through the cadence of things that just simplifies this experience where you don't have to re-engage throughout the process every single time. Um, and one other point to add there is uh, we have a a, a premier uh, DAP uh, orchestrate. It's called DAP Orchestration Basics. It's on GitHub. Anyone can clone it. Anyone can fork it. And you can start to see the evolution of what we're putting out into the real world uh, with the orchestration API, where you can see these examples on how to do the next thing that we're introducing. Um, and uh, you can you can clone it. You can fork it. You can start experimenting with it. Uh, we we do live workshops. Uh, we have um, great content um, uh, on that side of things, and and it's 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 really cool. Um, so that's uh, orchestration uh, in, in a few bullet points, um, and and yeah, I I've heard a lot of analogies about the orchestration and orchestration API, but I think that was the first time I've heard something that's referring to biology, and I just got to give you some credit for that one. That was that was fantastic. <laughs> um, Thank you. So. So recently, we've heard from people like Dean in his conference talks and Roland hinting at a few things in his call and in some tweets about an EVM expansion. So, Tim, could you explain to us what is the EVM expansion and what's involved? What does it mean for Agoric? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think just stepping back, just very elegantly <laughs> in in the reality of it right the space is growing at like lightning speeds um there's no longer like one or two blockchains which is great like there's very specific real use cases for certain things some blockchains are very specific at doing real things really well uh there's some general purpose blockchains um but also let's face it it's not just multi-chain now there's multi-layer multi-wallet and it it can get kind of kind of complicated um, so I think part of that is it doesn't really have to be. Uh, so we want to simplify a lot of these pain points across the space. And that's allowing a lot of the fragmentation that's happening now to be a little bit more easier or, or a lot more easier to participate in when you're not having to really think about a lot of the things that in, in our, our daily lives today are just built in under the hood. So I think a, a, a big initiative here is that expansion to the EVM space is a natural progression to the orchestration API, tapping into and allowing the same developer experience that we've been delivering uh, out the door for orchestration API today into new spaces that are just a, a natural progression of that. Um, so I think that that's um, just really important off the top. The space is growing and we completely recognize that and we want to bring the same experience across these different ecosystems, across these different developer communities, across the different uh, niche environments and, and just mass adoption sectors as well. Um, so this is just a natural progression to that. Um, and part of this also is not all chains are created equal, right? They, some have different fundamentals, some share the same fundamentals. 
Um, some have different values or overlapping tech stacks. And uh, going after the EVM space definitely covers a lot of a lot of things that we're trying to um, really look at when when we are growing, when when we are expanding, and, and wanting to allow other developers the ability to participate in some of these things as well. Um, so just to kind of summarize that a little bit, for Agoric, it really means pioneering the same superior developer experience that we've been able to bring to market uh, with the orchestration API going live today, uh, but now moving into Ethereum. So that's super exciting. And also, we can continue to unlock those serious bottlenecks that do exist across the space to just really allow people to focus on their ideas and their cross-chain experiences. Um, and just tapping on that again, like I just going back to sort of my background of just recognizing a lot of the pain points that we have, the reality, the reality of it today is there are still very significant UI UX blockchain pain points. And we, there's been a lot of work to chip away at that. But I think looking back a few years ago, like if you didn't have a wallet connected to your DAP, you'd get the white screen of death. <laughs> and that's, that's scary and frustrating. And I think now being able to bring the orchestration API to, to market and, and where it's going there is it brings back some time and some energy to focus on, you know, the, what, what does the UI look like? Um, you know, because a lot of, the, you know, using JavaScript, being having a way to chip away at that learning curve where people uh, can already feel familiar with something, especially if you're, if you're a small team, a lot of times the focus is, is on the building in the tech stack, but also like, hey, maybe Connect Wallet could be named something else or what best practice could we bring to bring other, other uh, UI experiences to the space where we might have time for now. So I think orchestration API as itself raises the bar of an experience factor, but also untap or, or opening up the ability for teams to also put more time into UI, which I think is gonna help um, significantly uh, across the space. So um, I think that's just um, more time for UX and less time and less time for bad habits, especially today, like with GitHub, it's, it's super great as a tool. But a lot of times when you clone things, you're cloning the good and the bad, or the, the good and the things that could be improved upon. And there, there can continue to become this um, bandwagon UI that might not be uh, perfect or optimized, but everyone's starting to use it too. So I think we're going to see some really positive things from a UI perspective as well. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Great, thanks for the detailed response there. Um, continuing on uh, on this note, um, when talking with potential partners and people interested in uh, orchestration for, from the EVM perspective, what are the most sought after features from these builders? Yeah, it, exactly. Um, there's definitely a lot. I, I, th I think part of it is from a pain point perspective, there's different layers, there's different, a lot of clicking that needs to happen. Um, UIs continue to need some work in various places, informing the user, making sure they know what's happening uh, as, uh, as things are progressing to the level that they might need or only want. Um, I don't really need to know exactly what's happening under the hood when I'm using something, but I want to I want to trust it. I want to make sure I know what's happening um, and not having to participate each step of the way throughout that process. I want to click a button and know what's going to happen and be confident that it's going to happen at, at the time frame that I'm expecting it to. Um, so being able to really own the experience more for um, for uh, experiences that developers want to create for their 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 thousands, millions, hundreds of thousands of users, whatever that may be, they can own the experience more for their users, where they can handhold the user through the process if, if they need to or want to, rather than having the user be reliant upon learning everything, having to click, having to sign, having to do everything throughout the process. So this really empowers those, those builders to be able to own that experience themselves more, uh, to be able to... Um, uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, create those experiences for them. Um, and then also being able to onboard assets and, and do various things, cross chains, cross layers uh, is, is definitely uh, a, a big one, a, a big one as well. So being able to own the experience more and to be able to be as composable as possible is something that's very fragmented. Uh, so 
being able to put that all under one hood is 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 something uh, definitely exciting for them. And uh, here's here's a fun, challenging question for you: the best case for when the EVM expansion will be live. Yeah, for sure. So th this is something that we are incredibly focused on. Um, so and this is everything from how do we envision this to look like from an experience for developers, partners that we're looking uh, to work with, partners partnerships that we formed. Um, so this is something that is it, it, the bullseye is there. Um, we are looking at a Q1 for a phase rollout of, of some of the approaches that we have. And and part of this is like the when when we're reaching to EVM, there there's there's a lot to that, right? There's a lot that it will give us, but there are things that we can do, whether it's um, you know, being able to send assets, being able to tap into the vast amount of contracts that exist, and to be able to call certain contracts and do certain things that could be in a different phase as well. And to be able to do more things, add more chains, add more layers uh, is something uh, that will be part of that rollout as well. So Q1 is where we're going to start to see what orchestration API looks like as an extension to EVM. Uh, and uh, following that evolution down the roadmap is, is uh, something to, to definitely uh, stay close to. Um, great. And so, with the um, recent news that we uh, about the Agoric and Union partnership, uh, curious, what will the partnership with Union enable in the short, medium, and long term uh, from an orchestration perspective? Yeah, so uh, first off, uh, the Union team is fantastic. Uh, met some of the team personally over the course of uh, the conferences through the, the 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 past months met some of the the founding members and some of the developers and um, really loved what they were building and the energy and and super excited to really kick this off and and build amazing things together. I you know I really like to think of this as like win win wins. You know it's, it's a win for win, a win for them, a win for us, but a win for you, right? It's everybody wins when when we can find really good ways to to build amazing things together. Um, so we're really excited for that. And I think the short term, it allows us to really kick things off and, and really put ourselves in the beginning phases of what this is going to look like. Um, and then really start tapping into in the medium and long term on, you know, how can we expand? How can we grow with them? How can we, uh, keep our, our roadmaps, uh, together so we can launch, you know, launch things together and, and open up accessibility to uh, to you all as as uh, things get get built out there and that can go into expanding into other chains other ecosystems uh, and things like that so um, we're at the beginning phases of that but uh, this is something we're incredibly focused on this is something uh, we know is desired and needed um, underscored on both of those uh, so uh, yeah looking looking forward to that partnership and, and where it begins and, and where it moves into and at the start there, you sort of touched on, you know, they're, they're a great team, um, but uh, maybe you can speak a little bit more on, you know, what's unique, uh, what's uniquely great about Union. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, yeah, so it hit, hit on some of the team, um, the great synergy, great alignment there. Um, the tech, it's, it's super cool. They're building cutting edge uh, tech that's uh, also in the utilizes uh, ZK. That's a big power of ZK. They can really focus on you know, things being cost effective, things being fast, things, things being optimized. Uh, it's a big power tool for, for the API and to be able to integrate with things like that. Um, with, you know, with ZK, you can connect with protocols with zero trusted actors. Like you don't need to, to there, there's certain things that you don't even need to think about anymore when you're, when you're dealing with that sort of, uh, technology stack from the ZK side. So that's really empowering and it really optimizes a lot of things. Um, so, um, that's, that's a, a unique capability that we are embracing and, and really look forward to, uh, building with them. And yeah, I, I I've been following Union for a while myself. I, I think I heard about it from Dean in uh, at some point. Um, and they it's a really cool project, really great team. Uh, so just a plus one to that from my side. Um, on to the next question. 
Um, so does Union plus the orchestration API spell the end for bridges like Axelar, Wormhole, et cetera? Um, no, that short answer, no. Um, I, I think the API's in, intention is to definitely give developers a choice and ab ab abstract away a lot of the complexities. Um, so we're not getting rid of anything. We don't see this as, as things that are going to be going away. There's, there's very specific use cases and very important use cases for uh, these types of things. Um, and what we're, we're looking at doing from our orchestration API is to make sure that we can account for those types of things. Maybe there's a, a, a builder or developer or a partner or team that wants to do something with a, a very specific use case. We don't want to be a bottleneck there. We want to make sure that they can utilize those types of technologies uh, because it fits their stack, it fits their methodologies, it fits their uh, their uh, their fundamentals. So whatever that may be, we we don't want to uh, restrict anything like that. We want to essentially enable more of the types of things that people in, enjoy and love uh, across the space. And um, an another one. Uh, and this one that was actually new to me. Is the Agoric team involved in any way with IBC Eureka? Um, so uh, from from this perspective, no. Uh, we you know, we have uh, very strong connections to the IBC team, uh, but Agoric is not involved with uh, IBC uh, Eureka. And then uh, moving on. This, uh, so is anyone showing interest in building on Agoric or is all of the interest on the orchestration API? Uh, so from this perspective, I mean, just right out the door, things have been incredibly positive from a sentiment perspective uh, around the API and anything that's good for the orchestration API is definitely good for, for Agoric from that perspective. Um, so in general, there's really positive energy coming in from from all sides. So I think that that's really good. Uh, we've had uh, some really positive energy coming in through our uh, early access program projects that are seriously interested in, in, in the builder pipeline. So that's, uh, that's great to see, you know, getting, getting closer, um, it, even from my perspective too, making sure that um, I'm doing a lot of listening and, and the team, the team's doing a lot of listening here to understand the needs, the wants, the desires, the w things like that is, is, is really important. Um, so uh, a lot of po positive energy coming in uh, from all sides. And I think that that's good. Um, and we have a really exciting uh, thing. There's a lot of exciting things uh, to come uh, there as well. So all around uh, good energy. You might be on mute. Yes, I was on mute. <laughs> um, <laughs> so moving into the closing questions now, how is the orchestration API functionality expanding in the next three to 12 months? Yeah, um, it's expanding. <laughs> so uh, let's let's just start off like, uh, super proud of the team, super pumped. The orchestration API is live. Uh, that's been an amazing, uh, few years and months and in, in, in time. Um, I, I, I didn't start from the beginning. I joined the team a few months ago, but uh, it's it's been really exciting to see that get out the door and, um, you know, bringing that out uh, for developers to experience partners to start working with is, is, is really exciting there. But, you know, we're not we're not done. This is actually just the beginning. Um, we're 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 well focused on the reach to EVM. We have other amazing partnerships and things in the works around fast USDC, continued partnership development. Uh, we have continued growth of our DAP, uh, showing developers the API's capabilities of of what not just we're putting out in the SDK, but how how can you be inspired by things inside this DAP to build your amazing ideas to bring those to life. Um, we're doing things around making the API uh, really digestible in a way that we can start to uh, build orchestration components around like, this is how we want to do NFTs or how we want to enable you to work with DAOs or how you handle payroll, things like that. There's a lot of ways that we can take this functionality and, and uh, package it up to, um, to provide a lot of really useful utility just by thinking about it slightly different, it can it can really start turning the gears on on what could be built, um, and then enhance developer tooling. Um, when you're when you're really working and building in a multi chain world, there are some unique tooling 
uh, necessities and requirements that you might need. Uh, so making sure that we can empower developers to have the right tools to follow the logging of transactions as they move between chains, understanding um, this is something that could be taking too long. Uh, this is something that was super, super fast. Um, so being able to track some of that and to be able to help empower developers to understand what's happening as much as possible as uh, we're, we're releasing this functionality is, is definitely on our radar uh, as well. Um, and then, you know, also as part of that roadmap too, um, you know, it, continuing to expand and, and really find uh, a marketplace where the orchestration API can, can, can fit well in other development ecosystems. Um, so, uh, and that comes along with developer experience, where the API can tap into partnerships that can get us from from those places. Um, so lots lots to come, lots to be excited about. But um, uh, yeah, that's just hitting off some of the list there. On the note of other ecosystems, Solana has been hinted at previously. How far away is this Solana expansion? Yeah. So from <clears throat> excuse me, just need a sip. So. From that perspective, um, right, I think doing the reach to EVM is is a really big um, opportunity for us to do a lot of learning, and especially when it comes from the API's perspective. It's not just like, how can we get to EVM, but it's like, how can we get to other places efficiently, effectively, where we're not needing to reinvent the wheel on a lot of these things, where it can be very well um, foundational as a core to the orchestration API. So what that really comes down to is sort of a more of a prioritization thing once once we get a lot of this infrastructure uh, kind of uh, kind of built in there. So um, so definitely things like that are, are on our radar and it's making sure that we can we can put things in place where it's more of like, in, in my perspective, not saying this too lightly, but it can come down to more of like flipping a switch rather than putting a lot of a lot of infrastructure in place ju just to get to the next ecosystem. And that's part of the, the, the design of how we're building things, how we're specking things out, and how we're doing things to be able to get us into the next ecosystem as quickly and effectively as possible, as, as effectively as possible. And last two, couple of quick ones. When is the first orchestration partnership expected to be live? Uh, so from this perspective, I think uh, we're looking at Q1 for a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of things to um, to, to come out. So, uh, from that perspective, uh, I'd say uh, Q1 is is looking looking good there. And last one, any EVM expansion alpha? Oh man, this is this is. I, I think from my perspective, EVM is coming. That's the tweet. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I mean, we get, we we got a lot coming, um, and uh, it, it's it's uh, it, it's really exciting to 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 see us be able to tap into those spaces um, and to to unlock a, a lot of things. So um, yeah, that's the tweet. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's great. Um, well, uh, I think we got through all of the questions. And uh, so, Tim, I want to thank you very much for your time. Uh, this was a, this was very insightful. This is really uh, a great chat with you. And uh, to the community members, thank you for asking such great questions. I, I love being able to field questions from you guys to our team. Um, and so, yeah, that wraps up this month's uh, Community Connect. And uh, join us next month, December. Our guests are TBD. Uh, I'll be announcing those ahead of time. The recording for this one will be available on YouTube shortly after, uh, shortly after we're done here. And then uh, be sure to subscribe to the Agoric newsletter for all of the latest news on the API, chain abstraction, and orchestration for Web3. And uh, please feel free to share your thoughts with us. Uh, tweet about it. Send us messages here in Discord. Um, and yeah, always happy to reach out and connect with our members of our community. And so one more time, thanks, Tim, for your thanks a lot, Tim, for your time today. Much appreciated. Thank you all. Really appreciate it. Uh, glad to see you all here. Looking forward to it. And uh, stay tuned. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.